everybody. Oh, here we go. How's everybody doing? Oh, hopefully everybody's doing well over the weekend. This is the first time the machine has been up in a week. Here we go. Uh, because of the time it took me to get everything back from my house to the shop, I got busy with online orders and literally up until this morning, it was still packed in the bag. It's been crazy. Morning, Suzanne. So yeah, it's been a little bit nuts. Just a little bit. Don't get me wrong. I'm very happy with the online orders because it's keeping the doors open. It's just crazy. Absolutely crazy. Okay, people, we are on block five, which is this one right here. Um, or if you're doing it like me, the blue version, we're doing this one right here. Okay. After we're done with block five, next or probably Thursday, I will do a quick video on the surrounding stars, which are really, really simple. And then I will give you maybe two weeks to get all your surrounding stars together before we have another video to piece everything together. With the surrounding stars, I'll give you the instructions for the filler pieces to frame, and we'll put it together and we'll be almost, and we'll be done. So again, this is the one we're doing. Mine, I know you can't see it, but it's all laid out over here just because I was doing things very quickly, oh, as usual. Just too much to do in one, for one person. I'm telling you, it's crazy. All right, now, let's see, what do we have? All right. That's a little bit better. All right, for this one, I don't think we're gonna have the issues for putting it together in bigger triangle pieces like we did the last block, because it's all fairly simple. This block, this um, last block is a lot of half square triangles, flying geese, and stars. So I think it's gonna be real simple. So this one, I think, um, we're gonna start with the flying geese in the center. And I'll show you which ones that is. I can't wait till things go back to normal so that my videos are better. It's a little bit harder when you're trying to go between one place and another. It's not easy. Okay, what I'm gonna start with, and hopefully you can see this, See this pink in the screen, uh, flying geese here. I'm gonna do all four of these flying geese, which is just a half square triangle on one, or a triangle on a bigger triangle. A lot of the times this is done with a rectangle and two squares. If anybody watched the um, Stitch Happens so along, we did flying geese in uh, probably three or four different methods, we put them together. Once I'm done doing all these flying geese, I'm not gonna put them onto the big square. I will ick two sides, that's it. The others, I'm gonna keep together um, separately because we're gonna put this corner together as one block. All right, let's go. Good morning, Rose. How is the weather up in Cape Cod, Rose? And I think I've actually, well, today we'll tell if I figured out the problem with my machine. I have two foot pedals. One is for, um, they're two different machines, Baby Lock and Brother, and they both look exactly the same. And I think when I went home, I was using 
my brother foot on, I mean my baby lock foot on my brother machine, which I think is what caused an issue. All right, I'm gonna unstitch that just for a minute. Um, ew, still snow in April. Oh, that's scary. With all of these stars, I just, the reason I'm unstitching it is because I used a quarter inch seam and I actually have been using a scant quarter inch seam throughout. So I just gotta change it back to a scant quarter of an inch. I hope you guys are enjoying this and I hope you're learning different tips and tricks. I am not, um, I don't consider myself an expert by any stretch of the imagination. I do not do things the traditional quilter's way. I do things my own way. Some people like that. Some people can ga gain something out of that process the way I do it. Um, I definitely would not put one of my quilts in a show because I do not hand stitch, especially with binding or anything like that. But I do everything as far as quilting and sewing according to ease and time. I have a lot to do. And for those of you who don't know, I am a one woman band. What that means is I run my business by myself. I do not have employees. I have a couple of part-time teachers that help me out. Um, but I teach a good majority of the classes. I do all the ordering, I do the advertising, I do the bookkeeping, I do it all. And as a result, I don't have a lot of free time at all. So my time, as far as I'm concerned, is extremely valuable. I think the foot was the wrong foot and that's why my machine was acting up while it was at home. Woohoo! Okay. Now, and I know if you've been watching all these videos or you've seen my other videos, some of this is going to be repeat and I, po I apologize for that. Others, it'll be new for you. Uh, Best Press, which is a starch alternative, I highly, highly recommend using because it will save you a lot of trouble with your pieces stretching, the fabric stretching, and it just makes life so much easier. I am amazed at how much you guys are sewing. I'm envious. I keep getting pictures, new pictures every day of what you guys are working on and completing. And I am extremely envious because what you've seen me sewing, that's pretty much all I've sewed. I brought home probably six different projects that I decided I wanted to do while I was at home. And I didn't work on any. Not one. I'm actually looking forward to working on the mystery quilt. I love Poop Sisters. And I'm going to be sewing that. I don't, I mean, I haven't heard all the particulars as far as when we're going to open. I don't think that um, we're going to be opening anytime soon. So I have decided that I am going to sew right along with you on the Hoop Sisters. We'll do the blocks together. Normally I provide a free class to help you every Wednesday with the blocks. Um, so I think I'm just going to sew right along with you. If you are um, one of my customers and you order Hoop Sisters the Mystery Quilt, send me proof via email or text message or message on Facebook that you purchased it and that you added me as your Hoop Sisters shop and I'll enter you into a drawing to get a free Hoop Sisters CD of your choice. It's fun. Okay. There's our prairie points. I mean our flying geese. Sorry. <laughs>
I just have to do one more and then we'll go on to the next part. I've got, um, what am I going to be posting? Oh, I'm going to be posting these really cute nurse's caps that one of my customers, online customers, bought some Disney fabric from me and she's making them for her uh, fellow nurses. They're really cute. So what else are you guys working on? Now that I'm back at the shop, I think things will be a little bit better. Although I should knock on wood because that's what I thought Wednesday when I brought everything back to the shop and then all heck broke loose. And literally I had enough time to unload the cars, put everything in the classroom and that was it. I didn't have time to do anything else because it just got crazy. As a reminder with the Hoop Sisters Mystery Quilt, I did post a few pictures on different fabrics and pulled some fabrics for a couple of customers. Uh, I am more than happy to do that for you if you give me some color options that you like because I have seen the quilt even though my lips are sealed. A little bit different um, on this mystery quilt in that there's only four fabrics besides the backing fabric, obviously, um, which is kind of unusual for a lot of the Hoop Sisters quilts. There is usually a lot more fabrics than that. Um, if you haven't read my posts or heard me, this if you've never tried Hoop Sisters, this is the most price conscious and reasonable way to do it. The mystery quilts are very reasonably priced. And after the mystery quilt is all done, then it'll go for sale for a much higher price. So if you've never tried it, and the other thing that's really nice about this year's mystery quilt, normally on mystery quilts, they only offer them in two sizes, uh, five and eight, I believe. This year, the mystery quilt, not only is it early, but they have all the sizes. So you have five inch blocks all the way up to nine inch blocks. Good morning, Alma, how are you? Okay, now I'm gonna work on one of the little corners and I'll show you. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna work on this corner right here. So hopefully you can see that, I hope so. I think you can, but this corner right here, which are two half square triangles and two regular squares. I'm going to iron my seam towards these small squares. Hopefully you can see that. And that way, when I go to nest the seams of those two small mini rows together, they will nest really, really well. So does anybody have any questions about Hoop Sisters, uh, about the mystery quilt, about the star sampler, which we're almost done with, or anything else? For those of you working on the Saturday sampler, I am trying my best to have additional blocks ready for you before the by the end of this month. Um, just depends on how much time I have because things have been very, very crazy. And I am chain piecing these. So the two, two sets of little half square triangles, I'm going to put them through the machine, not at the same time, but one right after another without cutting my thread. And since they both have the same fabric and one part of the half square triangle, that's the side that I will sew my seam to. Are you guys seeing the um, the um, closed captioning? <laughs> I don't know how I did that, but on my version, I'm seeing closed captioning, which means it is providing text that 
corresponds with all of my words, which is weird because I don't remember setting that up. Now, in order to, again, this is probably repeat for most of you, but I think it bears repeating. See the half square triangle? To set the seam, which means I'm going to use the green on top because both of the half square tri triangles have the same color. Setting the seam is you keep it folded like that and just run your iron over it to give it a quick heat. And then by keeping that fabric on top, because that's the side that I want my seams to be ironed towards the seam, and I push it over, that's how you do that. Yes. Alma, it is the sampler, the star sampler that I posted that I'm working on. This is block number five. And for those of you who don't know, again, and I apologize if this is um, a lot of repeats, but I do not, um, hold on, I'm going to make sure I've got this done right. I do not cut off my dog, uh, dog ears. I leave them on. Yeah, okay. Because <clears throat> for the most part, they don't bother me. And if anything else, they actually help me when I'm piecing. Ugh. So, Rose, you got snow, and we got heat. It's been pretty warm and humid lately. Just with the half, same with the half square triangles, I am going to chain piece them. I want the seam to go towards this square. So I'm going to keep that one on top in both of them. One is a light blue in my case and the other one's a mint green. Only because I don't want the bulk of seams over on the half square triangle if I can help it. So, there is one. I'm going to sew these together. And because I ironed my seam on opposite sides, we can actually nest these. What that means is, one seam's going this way, the bottom seam's going that way, and when you butt them up against each other, it'll be nice and flat and your seams will line up perfectly. It's probably one of the only times that I ever pin and that's just to make sure that the seams line up. And as you can see, I'm pinning on an angle down. That's so when I sew, my needle can be down in the seam before I pull this pin out. Sometimes just the act of pulling the pin out is enough to make your seams not line up. my machine is not acting up like it was at home which means I had the wrong foot the wrong pedal I should say <sighs> so it happens when you are tired you have one too many machines that both look the same have the same type of 
um, attachments. There you go. And believe it or not, even though both of the petals look the same, literally they're the same, um, and apparently the machine doesn't like the baby lock petal, which is why it was giving me so much trouble. Okay, now I'm going to move to the half square triangles that are at the end, on the outskirts, the bigger ones. So we just did, we just did this part right here, and I'm going to do the half square triangle this side, this side, and use this, the white block in the, the corner, and put this big corner, this whole corner together. And just like I did with the other half square triangles, I am going to chain piece them and iron them towards the blue, which is the darker of the two fabrics. Iron the seam towards the blue, I should say. So is anybody seeing that closed captioning? I think it's kind of funny. I wonder how good it is but sometimes those things they don't always capture kind of like when you're voice texting they don't always capture the correct words kind of like autocorrect from what I can see it looks pretty good as far as catching the right words See how the, they're connected? That's what it means when you chain piece. Yes, you save a little bit of thread, but for me, it's more of a timing issue. Um, it saves a little bit of extra time. And we're gonna keep the light blue triangles on top so we could set our seam. Okay, let's see if I can show you this. Uh, I don't know, because the board, I'm using the other board. Okay. I'm just gonna sew them together. That'll be easier to show you two pieces than trying to do four. All right, now I'm working on that corner. And I am going to piece it together. I'm going to iron my seam um, and I think I did it wrong. Oh no, I didn't. Okay. And this time I'm going to iron my seam towards the half square triangle side. 
So that's the side that'll be up when I set my seam. It's wrong. Aha. Uh -huh. Hey, that's what happens sometimes if you don't pin. It should have been turned. Sometimes pinning is good, even if you're not pinning to line up your seams, but you're pinning to tell yourself which side of the block you need to sew on. So yes, that, I do that mistake a lot by not pinning. And I just sew on the wrong side. How's everybody else doing out there? What are you doing that, um, besides sewing, obviously, to uh, get yourself through the lockdown? and not being able to go out. It doesn't affect me as much as most of you it will affect because I'm at the shop almost every day. Even though there's no customers here, I'm still here working. So it really hasn't changed me and my routine much of an at all. I know a lot of women are doing, or people, I should say, not just women, are doing a lot more yard work and gardening. I almost wish I could do that, but I just don't have the time. My yard is looking pretty yucky. And that is a technical term, yucky. Almost did it again. You know the old saying, cut once? I mean, yeah. Measure twice, cut once. Well, same thing goes for sewing. Check it before you sew it. Either that or you're going to be using Jack the Ripper like I do. So glad my machine is working well. I love doing the samplers. You can do this one too. The videos are still there. So is the patterns. Um, I know a lot of people like you that are just staying home and using a lot of their scraps and making scrap quilts. Um, I know a lot of people that are taking their scraps and making masks and caps for the doctors and nurses. Okay. So here we go. That's one of the corners. Now again, because I ironed the seam towards the half square triangle both sides, the seams are going to nest very nicely. 
You can still do this one, Alma. I'm sure you've got enough fabric at home to do the star sampler. You can do it as a scrap quilt. Each star, different colors, different fabrics. Okay, again, one of the scene, one of the times that I will pin. All the videos are there, Alma. And it really doesn't take that much fabric for this quilt at all. Especially if you decide to do it kind of like a Bonnie Hunter. So all of the, the background new, are just different neutrals. Or I think, um, yeah, you could do each star as a different color option, depending on what you have in your stash. No reason to buy fabric. But I will tell you, there are a lot of ladies and people out there, gentlemen alike, See, this is what happens when you don't sew a lot. Yeah, I did a boo-boo again. Um, my brain is just not here today. There are a lot of people out there buying fabric, though, I gotta say. I'm getting a ton of online orders, and I do curbside pickup. So if you want something, you can order it through the website, and let me know in the notes that you want to do a pickup and um i do still have i because of all the craziness i'm still running a sale of 10 percent off for everything and we have free shipping on orders over 35 dollars i even have made a few in-town deliveries to a couple of customers that are definitely homebound and can't get out just local um, I've heard some I mean I don't even I haven't even been going to the store my husband is the one that's been um, taking care of that or we've been doing I've been doing a lot of delivery so but the few customers and people that I've talked to have told me that even Walmart oh thank you Alma but this is easy um, I've heard from a few customers that Walmart is all out of cotton fabric. Now, I don't know if it's like that throughout the whole U.S., but here in Florida, it definitely is. All right, that's better. Sorry, I wasn't thinking. I don't know if Walmart is out of fabric at other places. I know Joanne's not out of fabric, but I also heard that Joann's is one of my customers Saturday I think told me they were forcing Joann's is forcing their customers to buy a two yard minimum which I was surprised at especially a store like that um, I don't understand it I don't know why they would do that I mean, I know Joann's is doing curbside pickup, but why you would force your customers to do a two-yard minimum, not even like a yard of two different fabrics, two yards per fabric minimum. Sorry. How is it in other parts of the country? I know some parts of the country are opening. Um, I'm not gonna talk politics by any stretch of the imagination because I learned that lesson a long time ago. Politics and business do not mix. I will say that I am afraid of some of the states opening up early for fear that it is just gonna push a 
faster second round of this virus and more people are going to get hurt. Um, I believe in what the government's doing as far as making sure that the states can't, you know, you got to go through phase one as far as having two weeks of declining number of cases. And I don't think some of the states that are opening early have gotten to that point yet, which really scares me. Um, you know, I have elderly people in my house and I have a lot of elderly customers and people with other pre-existing health issues and I don't want to see anybody getting hurt yes as a business owner it is tough I'll tell you that right now um, March was terrible when all of this stuff just started happening we got the, the orders to shut down um, it took a lot of uh, soul searching and sleepless nights trying to figure out what I was going to do to keep my doors open and a lot of that has to do with you customers who have done an amazing job and I thank you so very very much for your online orders and your um, curbside pickup orders because without you I would definitely not have a business and my doors would be closed but at the same time there you go there's one of the corners and we're going to have three more to do like that so now I'm going to work on this center piece which is the flying geese we've already done and another flying geese um so it's kind of putting small businesses in a very difficult situation i understand the ppp grant and all of that Unfortunately, for someone like me that is a one-woman band, um, that's just adding another bill onto my books. And in the beginning, I didn't have customers coming in. I wasn't sure what I was doing. So adding another bill, since I don't have employees, so there's nothing that would be forgiven as far as the loan, just didn't seem like good business sense to me. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, thankfully, I don't need it. Um, not saying everything's perfect, but it's definitely much better than I thought it was going to be. And I'm very happy about that. Okay. Now, some of you have heard this before, and I apologize for it being redundant. All right. This is why I don't cut off my dog ears because to me, they don't get in my way and they help me. So I, uh, I sewed on one side of the flying geese. Now I'm trying to line up everything for the second one, second side. And if you look, because I didn't cut the dog ear off. Can you see how almost perfect and there is nothing perfect in quilting, but this is pretty close. The two little points are almost exactly the same size and the same height. That way, I don't have to pin. Because as long as it looks that way, to me, it's going to be coming out really, really well. And when I sew, I'm going to start right in this little L. So if you start there or if you were starting on the other side, it doesn't really make a difference. And end where you're stitching right in that little V. What that's going to do is make sure that you're going to have, when you iron it open, you're going to have a perfectly straight line. And it works every time. I try very hard not to pin. Not that I have anything against pinning. We all have our little quirks as far as what we like and what we don't like. Like I started by telling you, everything for me is about speed and how much time it takes me. Because if I'm working on one thing, then I'm not working on something else. And that can put me behind pretty fast. Okay. Barring my little knot because I didn't make sure that my 
thread was pulled back. See, I started right in that little V. And now, check it out. That way my edging on the top is gonna be nice and straight. I'm not gonna have any wonky dips or one side of the flying geese higher than the other. Unless I'm doing something like um, Lone Star, and even then, you know, the only time I would cut the dog is is in the center when all of those diamonds are coming together into a point. And even then, it's a little iffy because when I'm doing something like that, I will make a larger seam towards that point just by like a, a, a thread width or two. And what that does is it guarantees that you're not going to have um, a button. And if this quilt was turned around, I'd be able to show you. It's one of my earlier attempts at stacking rack or one block wonder and it was way back when when I had no idea what I was doing and because I didn't make that seam um, and I don't think I have a oh I do okay because I didn't make that seam just slightly larger at the point and what I mean by that is if you're going to have all of these pieces coming into one central area when it, before you get there i would say like if you're doing a quarter inch seam um an eighth of an inch before you get to that point or before you get to the first seam allowance just make your seam allowance in that area uh the the width of a stitch the width of your thread bigger what that does is that stops you from having a big old button of extra fabric right here. That's it. And I believe me, it took me a while to figure that out too and learn that lesson. Okay. So. Now. On two sides of our, cent our square, our center square here. I'm, we're working on this point right here. We just did this second set of flying geeses. So we've already done the first flying geeses. And on two sides of these, we will be sewing the flying geese all together. And then eventually that goes on to your center block because we've already done this one of these corners. So if you just digest, dissect it, um, it, sometimes it takes a little while, but you can get it done. Okay now we've got two flying geese in opposite direction these are the points off of the center square and this is the flying geese that we just did by putting them together it's going to be a like a square and a square type thing and again with this the door gears are gonna match up so that I can see that they're all gonna line up. Yeah, so that's my little spiel about opening the states opening too quickly yes being a small business i know it's difficult not having that income come in but at the second same time if your customers get sick or your employees get sick um that scares the crap out of me as far as one closing again and not having that income but also um you're hurting your customer base and i'm afraid that a second wave is going to be much harder for us to recuperate and i don't think business wise it's easy to recuperate from a second closing and i'm not a you know a business tycoon by any stretch of the imagination it's just 
my opinion. This is not like anything that we've ever seen. It's definitely something for the history books and not in a good way, unfortunately. Um, kind of like going through a hundred year flood in New England. Not exactly something that you want to do. I hope all of you out there come through this just fine. Because it will just break my heart if I find out any of my customers got really sick. Uh, I would not be happy. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Believe it or not, we're almost ready to put one quarter of this whole thing together and then you'll know how to do the rest. Okay, now we've got this right here, which is four triangles all coming together. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one half of the, of on an angle, put one half of this together, and then the other half of those together, and then put it to, put them, the two halves together, and then we'll be all set. So, I'm gonna do this side. But, Thank you very much, Alma, for the lovely compliment. But this is easy. And you can do this too. I've seen your work. You do beautiful work too. I think most of us, from my experience, are our worst enemies. None of us think we're very good at quilting and all of that. It takes someone else looking at your work and telling and complimenting him. And even then we sometimes don't believe it. We'll make excuses, because I've seen it and heard them all. We'll make excuses for, well, they're not a quilter. They really don't know what they're looking at. And you know, one of my biggest pet peeves, and it is a huge one, uh, when I'm teaching, especially beginners, I hate when people sit there and go, oh, see what I made? Oh, wait a minute. Don't look over there, though, because that was a mistake. And oh, wait a minute. Don't look down there, because that was a mistake. Let people enjoy your work. 99% of the time, they are not going to see anything wrong. I believe in the 2020 rule, and some of my customers know exactly what I'm talking about because I've said it many, many times. And for those of you who don't know what the 2020 rule is, if you can look at it from 20 feet away, riding horseback going 20 miles an hour, and you don't see anything wrong, guess what? There's nothing wrong. But I know for a fact, most of us are our worst enemies when it comes to our work. And I do the same thing. I'm no different than any of you. Very seldom. Uh, the most recent time, I think, is the ruler work quilt that I did. But very seldom do I love what I've made or don't find any faults with it or just enjoy it. And the ruler quilt, the ruler work block of the month, that I love. That I actually can honestly say I am very proud of. Why? Because as long as I have been quilting, it is the closest I will probably ever get. Well, I can't even say that anymore. Now that I sell long arms and I've been getting pretty good at that. Um, before that, I would have said that that is the closest I will ever get to a whole cloth quilt. And I was extremely pleased with that. And I really enjoy teaching that class too every month. Okay, and what that is, is basically free motion quilting with westerly ruler sample packs. And we do uh, about four blocks a month, and it takes about 10 months to do an entire quilt. 
and we do it as a quilt as you go. So you're learning how to use the rulers on your domestic machine and you don't have to deal with too big of a piece of quilt sandwich. And then we put them together. Um, since I found rulers, oh boy, let me tell you, that's all I wanna do is use rulers and do quilting. I don't get to do it very often though. Okay, here's our two halves and I'm gonna sew them together. We've, I've used the blue as where I'm going, where I've ironed my seams so that I can easily nest these seams together without any problem. So what, if anything, and I know this is a loaded question, do you do special in quilting that you actually love and that you are proud of? There has to be something. And I know it's difficult because we just built that way. We don't believe that we, what we do is good enough or pretty enough. But I'm here to tell you, there is nothing in sewing that is perfect. There's nothing in quilting that is perfect. Even in free motion quilting, okay, done with the computer, it's not perfect, I guarantee you. But there's got to be something that you're proud of in this hobby that we love that you can do. So I would love to hear what you think it is or even post a picture of what it is. Because I think that's important. I think it's very important for all of us. Stop putting down your work. I'll tell you, I'm the first one that does it. We all do it, but you gotta make a conscious effort not to do it. And let people enjoy your work. Ooh, there we go. Now, there's a lot of seams with this. So I highly suggest you, it's a good time to learn to be neat with your seams because the more neat your seams are, the easier it is to quilt, the better it'll look. So there you go. We're gonna sew this together. And that is either the postman, which I hope, or the maintenance man, which I hope not right now. Especially without me being, not with me being on video. Uh, I think it was the mailman because he's gone again. Thank goodness. That's one of the reasons why I'm glad. And I mean, normally the door isn't open on a Monday, but I knew I had mail to pick, picked up. But that's one of the reasons I am glad about being at the shop, trying to do these videos at home with the dogs and my dad and too many interruptions. At least here I can shut the ringer off on the phone so I don't have to deal with it. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Now, see, I was too busy talking. Not enough watching what I'm doing. Okay. Probably looks pretty good to you, right? But I'm going to unstitch just right here a little bit and make sure I do not cross over where the X is for my flying geese. I want to stay one thread width on the seam side. And what that's going to do, yes, I didn't um, completely cut off my point here, but I do when I iron it, want to give it a little bit more room so that I don't cut off the point. So when you're sewing these together and you have a point like that, make sure the point part, if you can, you can always, but make sure the point when you can is faced up so that you can see where you're sewing. And actually just, even if you've got to do a quick little like speed bump, I would recommend it because it's not going to make a difference in your whole seam allowance, but it's going to make a huge difference in your um, points. And that's how you're going to stop it from cutting off a point. All right. There we go. 
much better. Okay, now I'm gonna add this to the corner that we've already made and basically we're done for this one. You just have to do this three more times and put it together in quadrants. And what I mean by that is put the corner together, well, the other three corners, you're gonna put the center together and you can join it to one side or the other corner. And here, what I would do is put this whole center kind of row, like you're putting together three different rows. So put this whole center row together, then you're gonna do this corner, the center, and this corner, and put them together, and you'll have three rows to put together. This one's a fairly easy one, I think. All right. Now, I just have to sew these two together, and we've got our corner. And that's it. Does anybody have any questions? And I am going to take this opportunity to press my seams in the opposite direction on a couple of these, just to make nesting a little bit easier. So Thursday at 9 a.m. we are going to do have a quick video for the stars the smaller stars that go all the way around I'll show you how to put those together which is very very simple and this is probably one of the more um, uh, traditional stars and then we'll probably take a couple weeks off when I do these stars I'll give you the directions for these extra filler pieces and then for at least for cutting them and then two weeks after that we'll start putting them together putting the whole quilt top together we're almost done and I will be pinning here because I want my seams to match as much as possible. I don't, other than a corner, this corner here, which you don't wanna cut off the corner here on this side in that centerpiece, you should have enough seam allowance that it shouldn't be an issue. But again, if you make sure that that piece is facing up so that you can see it, just don't stitch over where it connects, where there's an X, and you'll be fine. Part of um, neat seams, which really does help in the quilting the free motion quilting process is making sure that your seams all lay flat. So when you're sewing and you've got a lot of piecing like this, trying to keep your seams flat, including picking up your foot when you need to so that you can readjust or make sure that it goes over flat really is something that if you learn that now and you take the time to do it now, it's only going to help you later on. All right. I think we're done. Pretty good. I could actually come in just a slight, a uh, little bit more, and I think I will. What I mean by that is I was off on one side, and I didn't make sure that the pieces were together. I made sure that the seam was pinned, but I didn't make sure that the pieces were together, the two pieces. So I have one seam that's a little bit bigger than the other. Not a big deal. Yep, 
that's an easy fix. I wish they were all that easy. So here is one of the actual corners, one of the centerpieces, and you're pretty much all set. Now all you have to do is do that three more times, put three rows together, and I'm going to recommend ironing this seam, and sometimes you have to change it, but I think I'm going to recommend it to iron the seam out to the corner, because there's an awful lot of piecing in this center part, and there's a lot of little points. And I think that's just going to make one big bulk mess. If anybody has any questions, you know where I am. Feel free to put a comment or question down here on the video. Or you can email me or you can call me. I am at the shop today is Monday for I don't know how long today. Normally I'm not open, but I'm trying to get orders stay on top of my orders so that they're down to zero every evening when I leave some nights I don't leave until after 10 or close to 10 but um, I'm here for as long as I need to be feel free to call me if you need to if you'd like curbside pickup or you can order online or if you have any questions if you'd like to do the hoop sisters mystery mystery quilt and you want me to pull some fabrics for you you know give you an idea just post them I'd be happy to do that for you or call me. I can email you or I can post them on Facebook. Take your pick. I'm still making kits for the Heroic Heart Totes. I've given you six options for kits, um, which I think is a great idea. And for those of you who don't know what that is, I know we're all making masks, but I thought the next step um, one of my suppliers came up with is this really cute little heart tote. Um, and once you make them, it's $19.99 and that includes the, the pattern and the fabric and depending on who you're giving them to whether it be a teacher or a first responder or a doctor or a nurse or whoever you can put appropriate little things into the tote it could be um, school so school supplies for a teacher or a bottle of wine or um, snacks and foods and things like that masks I, uh, there's a zillion different things that you could put into it but I do have six options on my website and on Facebook and you're more than willing to purchase any of those all right so if you don't need anything else I am done that's it for me for today and I can go back to work you know where I am I hope you guys are staying safe and I hope you're enjoying these videos and this quilt bye for now everybody